So our next speaker is Dr. Emilien Jamar, and he studied MS with Professor Jean-Claude Tabé at the University of Pierre and Marie Curie in Paris, followed by his PhD at the French National Institute of Agronomic Research in Toulouse. He conducted a toxicological evaluation of MS of heterocyclic aromatic amines produced during the cooking of meat. Staying in the Institute since 2007, his research has been on the study of metabolism by MS in the Department of Food Safety. His group is also a member of the French National Infrastructure of Metabolomics and Fluxomics, named Metabohub. Thank you. Thank you, Juliette, for this introduction. Hello, everybody, and bon appétit. Um, first of all, that's a real pleasure to present to you what we are doing in my group at Toulouse, uh, where we are developing and applying a targeted approach to study the metabolome as well as the exposome in the context of food safety and uh, toxicology. So, as you might know, most of the compounds that we will find in human metabolome are just metabolites used by our organism just to work. So it will be very important for us to study the variation of the concentration of this metabolite according to the exposure to a particular xenobiotic that we can find in diet. And to do that, we apply classic and targeted uh, metabolomics workflows using liquid chromatography, high resolution mass spectrometry, and we process the data using progenesis QI. Um, however, in, uh, in our organism, in our metabolome, we will also find traces of all the compounds to which we are exposed. We can find traces of uh, drugs or cosmetics that we use. We can also find traces of all the contaminants of the environment or all the substances that we will find in food. This compound can be from natural origin like food nutrients, or mycotoxins, or coming from human activities such as pesticides or plastifiers. And for that reason, we are also studying the, this metabolism, the xenobiotic me metabolism, to, to try to have a better characterization to, of the exposure to that compound. And our main objective will be to characterize a new compound, a non-compound to which we are exposed and can be potentially toxic for us. And for that reason, we are also developing untargeted exposomic workflows. And at the end, we try to make the link between the data obtained from the characterization of the exposure and uh, the evaluation of the biological effect with the metabolom uh, metabolomic study. Uh, so to illustrate that, the first uh, exposomic approach we developed several years ago was a classic suspect screening approach by monitoring uh, expected mass of some pesticide and some of the unknown metabolites. Also, we add to this list uh, numerous, numerous metabolites that potentially can be generated by phase one and phase two metabolism and which are not necessarily described in the literature. And like that, we were able to discriminate three populations according to uh, the place where the according to uh, the place where these people were living more or less far away from the crop cultures. And this discrimination was explained according to several metabolites of two pesticides, which were azoxystrombine and fempropimorph. Another way to study the exposome is to apply classic uh, metabolomic approaches. Well. Yes. Uh, so by UHPLC electrospray and mass spectrometry. So this is the results. Right. Yes. This is the results of another study where we uh, compare two population of organic food consumers or conventional food consumers. And here again, we were able to discriminate these two populations uh, according to many endogenous metabolites, according to many metabolites coming from the, fruit, from the food, and in particularly from fruits and vegetables. 
and at the end only two metabolites of pesticide were uh, identified. So if we look quickly at these results, we, we would like to say that these two populations are mainly discriminated according to the proportion of fruits and vegetables into their diet and not according to their exposure to pesticide. However, we have to take into account that there are remaining 100 of unknown metabolites, which can correspond to endogenous metabolites or to metabolites of pesticides. So to summarize for these two methods, um, it doesn't work very well, thank you. So to summarize, the suspect screening approach is very useful to identify metabolites because we know what we are looking for. But it's limited by the list of the suspected compound by definition. Um, at the opposite, the untargeted approach is not limited by the number of metabolites, but it's limited by the number of unknowns that we have to identify. And the question is, how can we focus just on the metabolite of interest to try to identify them? And for us in toxicology, the question will be how can we detect specifically potentially toxic compound or potentially bioactive metabolites? So to do that, we work on the glutathione detoxification pathway. Um, glutathione is able to, to bind electrophic compound through the cysteine. And uh, electrophic compounds are uh, deeply uh, studied in toxicology because they are able to bind with DNA or proteins. And therefore, they can have biological effect. However, they are detoxified by glutathione. Then there are several steps of metabolization to be, at the end, eliminated in urine uh, as a conjugate with mercapturic acid. So if we are able to specifically detect mercapturate, we'll be able to detect specifically electrophic compound, that is to say, potentially toxic compound. And also, we will use uh, a particular behavior of mercapturate in MSMS because they display a characteristic neutral loss at 129. And also, they can display a common fragment ion in the negative mode at, what, at 128. And to monitor that, we use a MSE acquisition mode of uh, the water's uh, instruments. Uh, it's a kind of all ion MSMS. It's combined a first scan of MSMS at a low energy of uh, collision, which can be considered as a full scan MS spectrum. And another scan of MSMS achieved at an higher energy of collision, but without any selection of the precursor ion. The next step will be the deconvolution by the unified software of waters, which built each MSMS of every ion that we will detect in your uh, analysis. So like that, we will obtain some information of uh, fragmentation of all the ions of the analysis, and we can detect all the compounds displaying this characteristic neutral loss on the MSMS. So to apply that, we collaborated with a team of the French National Institute of Agronomic Research, which is working uh, on the link between the red meat consumption, the lipid peroxidation, and the colorectal cancer. Um, their hypothesis of work is saying that the lipid peroxidation of polyunsaturated fatty acid is catalyzed by the heme iron that we will find in high amounts in red meat by definition. And this uh, lipid peroxidation with, will generate some reactive aldehyde. The most famous of them is the 4-hydroxy nonenal, non which is able to bind with uh, DNA and proteins and then to promote the colorectal cancer. Fortunately, the 4-HNE is detoxified through the glutathione pathway and uh, lead to the detection of uh, mercapturate conjugate into urine. So to study that, we design uh, an animal experiment uh, with eight group of uh, six rats. Uh, this uh, group uh, of rats were exposed during 15 days to uh, different diets containing different proportion of unsaturated fatty acid. Um, concerning, uh, for example, here fish oil which contain uh, more omega-3 unsaturated fatty acid 
and uh, at the opposite, the reference group was uh, fed only with cocoa oil, which contained mainly saturated fatty acid. Also, each diet contained either im iron or free iron coming from ferric citrate. And after 15 days, the uh, urine were collected and analyzed by a targeted analysis of the main biomarker of bi peroxidation, which is a mercapturate coming from the 4-HNE, and which is called hydroxinonenal. And also, we apply our classic and targeted metabolomic workflow using Progenesis QI to process the data. Um, we use also a C18 chromatographic column. Uh, ionization was achieved with electrospray, and uh, samples were analyzed on a Synapto G2SI mass spectrometer. In parallel, we also analyze our sample using our uh, profiling method for mercapturate by MSE. And at the end, we process both data sets using the collaborative portal uh, workflow for metabolomic to achieve statistics. So now we'll show you the results of the targeted analysis uh, where we can see uh, a, a very in high concentration of mercapturate uh, in the diet containing either uh, as well uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid and heme iron. Um, we also find this kind of results on the untargeted analysis where we can see, for example, here in red, uh, the, the linseed oil diet containing free iron, which is separated from the, the same diet with uh, linseed oil, but with uh, im iron. We also can separate uh, the three diet containing uh, both polyunsaturated fatty acid and im iron from the diet in green, which contain only cocoa oil and saturated fatty acid. And when we, uh, we apply our uh, profiling of mercapturate, we obtain a very nice separation of each uh, group, uh, which then facilitate us the annotation and identification of uh, discriminating features. Uh, so here it's the beginning of the list of all the mercapturates that we have to detect. Uh, so first of all, as I said, mercapturate gi given MSMS, uh, this kind of fragmentation when, where we can observe uh, the common fragment ion at 128, which correspond to acetylcysteine, but which uh, didn't give any information about what compound is conjugated to mercapturate. Uh, alternatively, the fragment ion coming from the neutral loss uh, from one, 129 uh, have the information of the compound uh, associated with mercapturic acid. So in the first atom, we only worked on uh, all the mercapturate displaying this fragment ion on their MSMS to try to identify this compound. So we will tag them in green here. Uh, then we will also uh, keep only metabolites which display formula, uh, chemical formula in agreement with this kind of structure. And finally, we will eliminate all the pick picking artifacts. And now we can start to annotate. And the first metabolite we annotate was uh, the DHNAMA, uh, catridoxinonenol, which corresponds to the main biomarker of lipid peroxidation. We also annotate the 4-HNE uh, directly conjugated to mercapturic acid, and also we detect other unsaturated aldehyde. We also detect their corresponding metabolite, uh, that is to say the alcohol unsaturated, conjugated also to mercapturic acid, and some carboxylic acid unsaturated also. To validate this annotation, we then try to do some MS to the third experiment on an orbitrap mass spectrometer. We uh, didn't obtain many information, but at least this information were in agreement with this kind of structure. We are now doing some standard synthesis to try to confirm this hypothesis of identification. At this stage, only one compound has been compared, which corresponds to the standard of DHNMA, and which displays the same retention time as well as the same MSMS. And also, we achieve some CCS measurement, and we can observe uh, an increase of the CCS according to the increase of the size of the metabolite. 
However, for this, uh, for this metabolite, we can see a, a decrease of the CCS, which corresponds actually to a cyclic form of, uh, of uh, this metabolite. And these results let us, let us to think that uh, the three other metabolites here, which display also a decrease of their CCS, may more likely correspond to cyclic structure. So following this detection and identification of some aldehyde, the question was, are, are we also able to identify other mercapturates? And actually, for, yes, we were able to detect other uh, aldehyde but containing a nitrogen atom on their structure. Since we are speaking about uh, a link with a sulfur atom, we are also able to find some disulfide compound. And concerning uh, the toxicology, we find uh, a very interesting compound, which is the, the styrene conjugated to mercapturic acid, and also some nitrogenous heterocyclic compound. So following this analysis of mercapturate, we also uh, perform our classic untargeted approach using progenesis. Uh, so this is the first step of progenesis, where we will align all the injection to, uh, for example, align the retention time. The next step is the uh, design of the experiment. For example, here we will process only the data corresponding to the four diets with in iron, and we will not process the QC sample. Then there is the pick picking step where all the features are associated according to all their detected isotopes. And after that, you can review the, the results. You can also deconvaluate the information concerning the adduct, and you can do uh, directly statistics. Uh, however, uh, with progenesis, you can also export the data at this stage and process the data with your uh, own uh, statistical tools. So that's what we did to, to do uh, PLSDA, where we can observe a very nice separation of the, the four diets containing in iron. And after that, you can come back to progenesis QI to try to identify the discriminant features. And uh, first of all, here you can tag the different features with a red dot, for example, just to, to tag the discriminant features. Uh, and you can compare the metabolite with your own database. And that's what we did to identify dozens of metabolites, uh, like, for example, the ursodeoxycholic acid. Uh, for this example, which display exactly the same retention time as well as the same MSMS spectrum. And like that, we were also able to detect and identify uh, many biliary acid uh, metabolites. And we can see on the signal of the ursodeoxycholic acid uh, a down regulation of uh, this metabolite in the three diets containing polyunsaturated fatty acid compared to the reference diet. Concerning the metabolites uh, not, uh, which are not in our database, you can also uh, interrogate uh, online database. Uh, for example, here we can annotate this compound uh, uh, with this structure, and now we, we, we will try to confirm this, uh, confirm this identification with a, a standard comparison. And here again, we can observe uh, uh, the signal of this metabolite according to the four study diet with an increase of its concentration for the diet containing fish oil and safflower oil uh, compared to the uh, other uh, diets. Uh, so to, uh, to conclude on that work, uh, so we develop a, a specific neutral loss screening of mercapturate using MSE that we successfully apply to the discrimination of different diets representative of lipid peroxidation. Uh, the main point of the MSE approach is that we clearly improve the statistical discrimination of the studied populations, and uh, this facilitates then the detection and identification of uh, discriminant features. Uh, also, which is interesting for us in toxicology is that we are also able to detect mercapturate of other reactive metabolites, for example, from styrene. And uh, the parallel analysis using uh, progenesis of the metabolome allow us to try to make a link between the exposure, for example, here to uh, lipid peroxidation, and the effect on the health of this particular exposure, for example, here by the modification of the biliary acid pathways. Uh, to finish, I would like to thank 
all the people involved in that work. So first of all, the group of Fabrice Pierre, which is working on the link between alimentation and colorectal cancer. Uh, also, all the people of, uh, which are working with me in mass spectrometry in the platform of Laurent de Brewer. And finally, uh, I would like to thank the, the people of uh, Waters and, and particularly of Nonliner Dynamics to give me this opportunity to present you that, that work. And uh, thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Sorry. <laughs> Um, you mentioned the eye mobility uh, yes. uh, that you did as well. How, how useful was the CCS? Did you use CCS values? Yes. How useful was that for the differentiation of? Did, did you have a look at any structural isomers, for example? Not yet, but it will be as the next step to try to uh, to model the, the CCS value from the uh, structures that we believe to be. Uh, that's the next step. We didn't start yet because uh, maybe, as you know, the modelization of the CCS is quite a complicated step because we have also to, to, uh, to model the, uh, the 3D structure of the compound, and which is very complex. So, but it will be the next step. Good luck. Hope you guys well. <laughs>